So hello and welcome back to day 22 of 100 Days of Code with me, Lily Code. What we did yesterday was um, Max had just changed to a new section and we were starting to code this new login section which looks a bit, oh yeah, sorry, I accidentally put a space there, which looks like this. Um, but he was also going through a lot of concepts and new terms and stuff. I hadn't actually seen this use effect before. What this actually allows us to do is uh -huh. okay. What it allows us to do is extract an element of the DOM or at least capture that DOM element and then you have all the things that are associated with a DOM node. So we were able to change the value by changing the value in the DOM which isn't the best way to change values so I've decided I'm actually going to watch these informational videos rather than just skipping them and um, so that's how I'm going to start today and then I'll relay back to you with the knowledge because he explains as he goes as well so I didn't see the point in just sitting here and looking at these videos but I actually need to understand it more so I'm just getting them up and I have some very exciting news coming out of my channel later on today or today um, so yes I've been given permission to use some amazing music so go do do go and check out that video um, where I fill you in on the artist and sing some songs with you guys because I'm very excited so yeah check that out okay Okay, so effects, reducers and context are advanced features, which doesn't mean they're complex, but it does mean that they are advanced. So that makes a bit of sense because, yeah, I've never even seen them. Use state, yeah, yeah, certainly, but not use effect. Haven't seen that yet. And the same with create portal. Create portal was new to me as well from the React DOM which was a way of moving an element around the DOM. So that was really interesting as well. comfortable for this little movie just need some popcorn <laughs> oh. Yes, these are my pajamas. <laughs> I'm up early, so uh, and it's just chilly today. So I'll get dressed after this. <laughs> Some hand cream. Okay. Okay. So, what is an effect? 
or a side effect. Oh. So these effects are called effects or side effects. So they clearly cause some sort of side effect. So let's find out what that is. So he's very nearly finished. He's going to be finished in a few seconds and then I'll explain what it is he has said about use effect. And it's pretty straightforward actually. Um, way less complex than I was giving it credit. <laughs> it's really not that confusing. Okay, great. Yeah, so this project that we are looking at now, this he's literally chosen this to display, to display this functionality to us. So that's useful. And what we're looking at here is basically, in a normal, why oh, is that happening? Sorry, I did see that going on. I went a different color, but I was confused. Okay, so you guys should be able to see me. Hello, hello, ha. So yeah, so basically in a normal component, right, we have the component itself. I'm just going to move this on over. We have the component itself. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> Okay, so in a normal component, we have the component definition, which is just defined like a function. So here we have a function definition and it calls out a component. And everything in here, right, is generally used for 
It is. A component and the function definition is for displaying things on your screen. So it's directly linked to things that will be shown on the screen. So then we have, we handle side effects with this use effect thing instead, right? And all a side effect is, is something that isn't directly being rendered on the screen. So examples of this could be um, a HTTP request. So the data you get back from the HTTP request, you're going to put on the screen. But all of that stuff in the interim, sending the request, getting the request back, doing error checking, if the request is empty, if the request doesn't, isn't found, um, all of that can be done in a use effect because it's not directly related to just putting that on the screen. And then other things that can also be done in a use effect manner uh, include timeouts and if you want to add a timer to things, things like that. So anything that's not directly just putting something on the screen, returning out some visual piece of code, we can use effects for that. So that's all an effect is. So that's actually, it's just for things that aren't strictly visual. So let me, first of all, I'll explain this next bit. So if I go use effect, so we've seen this yesterday as well, right? So use effect, we have this empty function that runs. We call it function definition. And then you have your effect. Then you can have some cleanup code in here, but you don't need this, right? Because this is how we seen it yesterday. And then you have your dependencies in here. Dependencies. And what all of all this is doing is that this is a function that should run after any time that any of these dependencies change. So you handed in a list of dependencies and if anything in that list changes, well then it's gonna go and run this function again. So that's really useful. That actually makes perfect sense. You know, we use it for things that aren't necessarily directly um, visual. And the array that's passed in secondly is the dependencies and these tell the function to run if something has changed within those. So that's useful. So let's just... Yeah, so side effects. So another example of a side effect I was trying to find for you, which is the case that we used it for here, is if you want to do something with the local storage, you would use use effect. So that's great. Now we know in what instances we would use this sort of a bit more about it and it's actually a lot less scary than I originally gave a credit because I was just like I don't know what this is this looks difficult but that wasn't the case it's a it's just a function and you pass in uh, your dependencies and if one of these changes anyway I've said that like a hundred times so I'll just continue and let's see what else we're going to look at now so well, we're going to continue coding with this use effect. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, so he's just chatting.
So I'm just watching the video here and I'm figuring out what I need to do next. just going over this stuff sorry I'm very fidgety this morning and I still haven't coded <laughs> but we're getting there I just have to listen to what he's saying for a moment I'm just skipping ahead a bit Okay, yeah, so it's also very common to use this use effect. Um, it's also common to use the use effect. Excuse me. It's also common to use the use effect when we want to monitor something that's, co that's going to change. So if we know some variable or something is going to change, well, use effect will run when something has changed. So therefore, it's a good... It's a good um, type of approach to use in this case because it's going to tell you when one of those things has changed and run the function again. So that's a great use case for it. Like if you need something that's going to do that, tell you when something has run. So we actually need to include some dependencies here, don't we? Yeah. So what are our dependencies? We want our dependencies to be our user email and the user password and then our login. So we definitely do want to pass something in. So first of all, I think we need our email and a password set item is logged in and we want to keep track of this so i think email and password if any of these change tell me Email is not defined, password is not defined. Okay, so. Yes, because we've only declared those names here. be entered email and entered password or should it just be nothing because I'm not sure if we have access to these over in that component but then these are being passed in 
from somewhere else, so we do. So let me just try this. And no, okay, so it doesn't like that. So let's just give it this set is logged in. Okay. And then let's try and log in. So I'm missing something there. I should really just think through this logically, but the brain is a bit, I don't know, this morning. It's Monday, isn't it? So it's getting back into the early mornings. That's all it is, actually. Should have went on a little walk this morning. I might go on a walk after I got dressed just get out and get some fresh air in and get this brain sucking some oxygen yeah Okay, so as it turns out, actually, I've just gone back um, and we don't want to pass in any dependencies here because we only want this to run once when the app starts. So this is actually the way it should be. So, okay, at least we know that. And then we can move on. Moving on up, moving on up, moving on up, moving on up.
Okay, so now we're going to just add a cleanup function to our function and put a set timeout on our function as well, just to see how these things are working. And the cleanup function doesn't run on the first execution of the block, but it runs from the after that on. And uh, yeah, so let's just see what's going on there. So we're going to add a set timeout. And this is just a function again. And we'll open that up and then everything is going to go inside this set timer. So you want to add an actual timer. Yes. One at a timer. And then in here we can do a comma and 500, which just means 500 milliseconds. So we want to wait for 500 milliseconds uh, is the length of our timer here. So then... In here we can have this um, cleanup function so we just have return and we open up our parentheses and we have an object and this is the incorrect this is not the right function I'm doing this in the wrong place so this should actually be happening in our login.js so in here now so we want a set timeout on the login and then we're going to open up our brackets and set get our function going. Our timeout is going to be 500 milliseconds. Then we want to have all of this information up here. So set form is valid. Not this line, just this goes in here. And then and then what we want is to add our cleanup function, which is just a return and an empty function, which runs on the second iteration of the code. So just like that. And and if we add a console log in here, we'll see when this runs, so this only runs after five, we'll only see this after 500 milliseconds because that's how long we've told this particular piece of code to wait. So So we are checking how the validity of the form here, we ha are checking that we have an at and that we have some amount of characters, so six. I'm going to just make this four because the paths were being six. It's too long. Excuse me. It's too long just while we are testing and developing here. So let's add in a email. Oh, and a password okay great so that works so I'll actually make that greater than three so here we can see that this is the bit that's checking for that length of the password and it needs to be over four characters long uh, trimming out any white space and over four characters then so that's actually working mm -hmm. because our password was less was five and then I highlighted so if I go to my console let's just reload and do that again so email and hit a password and this shouldn't come up until for a half a second so I'm going to click on three two one and when did that come up? <laughs> that didn't even, wasn't even apparent to me. So I'm going to just do it again. Okay, so three, two, one. What? That was there already, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, let's try again. Oh, yes, this runs. This doesn't run when we submit the form. 
this runs as we're entering the information. So there was a slight delay there, so that's good. I just wasn't sure what was going on. Um, man, I'm so restless today. <sighs> anyway, so, um, here we go. Okay, so we'll continue. Okay, so so it runs on the page being initialized. Yes, these use effects. They run once when the page is set up, first of all. So there's that first console log. Then now if we add in one letter, because that should run that particular function, Okay guys, hello. So what probably looks like a very sudden outfit change is um, I just split my day up into two today. So we just have to finish the rest of our hour and I'm gonna stick these two videos together. So where we left off was, well, where I left off this morning was that I was just checking the function here to make sure that on use effect, when we type in the value into the input box here so just one value at a time i'm going to type because this is run every single time we type a value into the box that this use effect gets run so let's see what's going on and i since moved on and removed the console logs so i'm going to just continue on with where i'm at <laughs> so yeah it may not have been an exact um copy because like exactly where I left off because part of the end of the video got corrupted as well so uh, I was just checking out this use effect so let's just keep going and figure out how use effect works so I was just looking at the use reducer content there introduction to them in general okay so yeah, all I did was like just use this use effect and set a timeout and it was actually in this login.js function. Yes, here we go. So if I was to un uncomment this, um, it would be the same. We would see that this set timeout was being run. But since then, I moved, like did a tiny bit more and we're actually implementing it in a new way. So I'm going to just continue because... Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So. So I'm just listening to the video as always um, figuring out where I'm at because I wanted to go back and show you that but then it seems like I've actually changed the code as well I forgot about that so I checked where I was left off in the video but I've since changed the code so not much and we're gonna be straight back on track now anyway we were just having a look at how this use effect works but we're going to use a different and a better approach now anyway so we'll just keep going and I'm just figuring out where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're back to where we were. Cool. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've just come back to this approach. So literally I just did this just before we set off. So this was Yeah, so we're going to just console log out the use effect and then we're going to go back to setting the email change handler and the password change handler. So the way that Max has done this is he's taken this particular piece of code, set his form valid and he's put that back in, which we had this in a previous video. So he's put these back in. Oh, sugar, sorry, I just meant to uncomment that back in here like this but rather than use an entered email in here we need to get it to event a target of value sorry guys um my going again so you guys can look at me so there i am hi huge <laughs> let's sort this out okay so So event of target. Oh, what is going on? I'm gonna just pause this and fix this, guys. Okay, so we are back. Sorry about the technical difficulty, guys. Technical difficulties, guys. So what we're doing now is we're just going back to our old way to check if the form is valid. And the way we do this is event of target of value as opposed to what we just had wrote in there. And that's because on this email change handler we're passing in the event and in order to get the value we just access it like this so that's what's going on there and do check out my other videos because i've been explaining all these things as i go and i'll continue to explain as i go but i went into depth in the last video about exactly how we traverse through an object and get these things just showed you in the console how i was getting this information out so might be helpful for some people and then this is also going to be copied uh -huh, and pasted into the password change handler as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then Max was saying that because of the way React runs, doing it like this, it may not contain the exact updated password at the right time because of just the way that React like logs things. So there's an even better way to do this again, but we're just implementing this code to show what it could be done like, and then I'm gonna show you the better way to do it. So I'll just keep on watching and then do the, be the best way that Max recommends and explain when I get there. Okay. So, okay, yes. So the reason that this is not the, mo the most ideal approach, I think what we can do is put these into the same object and then that will be a better approach is what I think Max is gonna say. But I'll just explain what's wrong with it so far. So we have our entered email and our email is valid. And what we're doing then is we are setting the email as valid based off another state thing. So React may update these two different states in at different times. 
um, because they're two separate things. So instead, I think the solution will be to include it all in the one state object. So it's all parsed and dealt with at the same time. So here we can see we have our email is valid and our entered email and they're two separate states. So these are sort of standalone state management. You know, they're being the state of these two things is being managed independently. So I think the answer is going to be to couple them together. And then that way we know we have that value for the entered email and if the email is valid. So I think that's going to be the solution. So I'll just keep watching. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm just at the part now where Max is given the solution and basically it is as I had um, suspected, been suspicious, that we are going to combine these two things into one particular thing, I think. So anyway, first of all, we're going to declare, I think that's a solution. So first we're going to declare a new constant. And this is, again, something we're going to not manage the state of. We're using use register this time. So this is going to be the email state and then dispatch email. And this is going to use reducer. So we will figure out a bit more about this as we go. Reducer, and I'll keep you guys posted as I learn. So let's keep watching. And then we're going to have, uh huh. Okay, so then the use reducer takes in a function, and that's going to be called email reducer, which I guess is going to reduce down these two things into one thing but let's just keep going I'm not really well it's good to guess I guess but I just want to make sure I'm telling you guys the correct guesses so this is our email reducer function and it's just a regular arrow function so we're going to declare that and keep listening Okay, so because this particular function doesn't need to interact with anything inside the component, we can declare it up out here, outside of the component definition, and the component definition is here, because we're in the login component, and everything in here is part of the component definition. But because we don't need to directly interact with any of that stuff, we can make the email reducer function outside. So. because all of the data will be passed into that when we need it by React. So that's why we can um, define it out here. So we pass in the state and action. And then in here, we're just going to return value. value and is valid. So value is just going to be empty and then is valid is going to be false for now. Valid. Is it valid? I don't know. Now I do know it's false for the moment. So there we go. And let's keep going. And okay, so email reducer um, uno momento so mm -hmm. okay okay and then we also pass this same initial state to our function down here and our use reducer when we call it, when we define it. So we can just paste in our initial state 
that we'd like to pass there as well. And then down here now on the password change handler, yep, we can instead pass in our email state dot value. So that's what we'll use instead, email state dot value. And mm -hmm. And we will also use this down in our validation. So now here we will also check, set the email as value is valid and we want to check if the email state dot value includes the at symbol. So that's what we're going to do. And then it's telling we have an error here in our console saying use reducer is not defined. So we just need to email reducer, use user reducer. So we need to declare this as well up in our array and just pull it in from React. So that's what we're going to do. I think that's where it should go. So I'll just wait a minute and see. Yeah, use reducer, yeah. Yeah, so it should be imported from React. Use reducer, not user reducer. So that was a spelling error there and now that error should go away. Okay, super de duper. User reducer, will we change that now? Do I have any other instances of user reducer? No, okay, so that's just hasn't updated yet because we don't have that anymore. Okay, so now we're going to just use this. Mm -hmm. We're just going to use this new email state that we have created with our use reducer. And that's what we plug into all of our different functions now. So when we're changing the password, we're going to check the email state off value. When we are validating the password we also have email state dot value here when we <coughs> excuse me when we are submitting we also want our email state dot value to be submitted mm -hmm. and when we are checking if the email is valid So, mine's 62. Okay. okay. Set email is valid. Okay, so here we just have email state dot value and then we're going to actually pass in is valid to see if it is valid so email state is valid here will tell us whether or not that email state is valid mm -hmm. yeah and then down here in our jsx instead of email is valid we now also use email state dot is valid instead uh -huh. mm -hmm. and when we're passing back over the value we use the email state dot value so it's just a slightly different way of doing the same things we've done already but this is the preferred way it seems so Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now because we've done it with an email state and we're tracking both of these things with the email state, we can get rid of these two use states. So the entered email and the email is valid. You can see that they are grayed out there. So we're no longer using them. We've done it a slightly better way. 
and I'm just also going to get rid of this use effect just to clean up the code because this is a long enough file already and then I'll save okay so now I need to get rid of all instances of set entered email mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we use the dispatch email instead that we've declared up here. So before when we were using the use state, you have the constant that you want to track the state of and then the function that you want to run. Whereas when you're using the reducer, it's done slightly differently. So now we have our email state and our dispatch email. So we use our dispatch email to update it instead. The second thing, just like before, similar. Um, this is the thing that you're going to update the email state with. So down here, instead of using set entered email, we're going to use our dispatch email. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can pass in whatever you want here. But... Okay guys, my internet has stopped working and um, we're coming up, it's just not loading. I'm gonna wait another minute, it's just not working. So um, yeah, in the interest of the fact that we've got 50 minutes done and I can't view the project, um, I'm gonna have to continue with this tomorrow. So thanks so much for joining me. Uh, hopefully 50 minutes is okay. If this loads, I'll come back and continue, but uh, at the moment, I can't view what Max is doing. It's just after stopping on me. <laughs> I'm having lots of technical difficulties today. So, look, have a wonderful day, guys. And thanks so much for joining me here on my channel, Lily Code. Please do like and subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you. And have a wonderful evening. Thanks very much. Okay, yeah. Thanks very much, guys.